So what is the second thing you want to know? Well, it's similar and hypothetical. <laughs> yep. So how would you do it if you didn't have the relationships or the status, let's say, or the know-how that you have now? And I know that's tricky because, <laughs> well, yeah. That's... It's good though. It's a good question. It's basically like, oh yeah, great answer. All right, now let's up, <laughs> now let's up the ante and make the challenge even tougher. So yeah, so this is good, right? So I had to think about this because like you said, it is hard to imagine like, okay, well, let's just forget I've done anything or have any knowledge or so I really tried to approach this as if I knew nothing about anything and was starting completely from scratch. You know, I've worked at a carnival for the last 20 years and all of it <laughs> and all of it, you know, or I was an NBA player and then it doesn't translate or whatever. So here's the first thing I would say. The first thing I would say is if I had no expertise, no relationships, no audience, completely starting from scratch and wanted to make 100000 a year, uh, the first thing I would do is I'd consider just getting a job, to be perfectly honest. Like, I see a lot of people who are like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. And you see this especially with a lot of young people coming right out of school. And I think they look at people like me who have built sort of successful solopreneur, creative entrepreneur business and the piece that they missed is I had a 20 year career before I started doing this. Right. And I think a lot of times, even if you ultimately want to become an entrepreneur, both financially and in terms of what you're going to learn and relationships you're going to develop, you know, the best thing you can do a lot of times is go get a job in, a, in, in related to a field or a thing, go get some experience as opposed to just trying to figure it all out on your own. And you can do that simultaneously. You know, for years I had side projects and blogs and newsletters and whatever. So I'm, I'm not saying not to do that. And look, for years of my career, I was like, I was constantly almost leaving, right? To go do my own thing. So I get it, I, you know, I understand it, but I do think a lot of times jobs can be underrated, especially when people don't have that experience in any of that stuff. So. That aside, aside from getting a job, the first thing that I would do, again, similar to what I said before, where I'd focus on service as opposed to product, but I would get hyper-focused on getting one client, find one person that could hire me and whatever service I'm offering, obviously I need to do a great job, but have it be a service that offers a very tangible result right? So that this person hires me to do something. And at the end of me doing it for them, or as I'm doing it for them, it's very easy to measure that whatever I have done has basically paid for itself. So one of the things that gets weird is, you know, I would be much more likely to help someone, for example, let's say rewrite their sales page. And you can see if sales go up and you can see how much revenue that generated. That's very different than, let me help someone with their brand. Let me help someone change their Twitter bio. Tough to tell, maybe it is better, but it's not as clear the tangible results of that. So if I'm starting from scratch, I need a case study that proves you paid me X, you got Y out of it, right? And I need one client that, that, that I can really make that work. Because if I can get one client and make it work, I can then take that to anyone else that's like them. And I have proof that like, look, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna pay me X and this is what's gonna happen. Here's exactly how it worked. And that will make the sales process way easier. And if I couldn't get one client to take a chance on me, I'd even do it for free if I had to. Find one person using this example. Let me rewrite your sales page. Let's measure the results. Let me use that, you know, as a case study that I can take to go get more people. So that's one thing I would do. Another thing I would do is I would consider if I had no expertise, this is another thing I see a lot of times is people are starting businesses based on monetizing their expertise, but they don't necessarily have a lot of expertise yet. Or they're not starting any business because they're like, I don't have any expertise. I don't know what to do. And all you have to do is sell value. It doesn't necessarily have to be your own expertise. So with that in mind, I would consider trying to start some kind of curated 
service in a specific niche that didn't rely on my own expertise if I didn't have it yet. For example, could I do, could I sell some sort of research reports in some industry where it's not my expertise, but I'm doing the research and compiling or interviewing people and compiling the expertise of others that is valuable, right? The curation piece of this. Could I create some sort of version of like Angie's List, right? Or be essentially a matchmaker or referral service in a particular industry. If, if, you know, let's say there are people out there that are looking to hire social media agencies and maybe I'm not good enough or have enough credentials to be the social media agency they hire, but could I go to them and say, Hey, I've interviewed and studied and talked to clients of 20 different social media agencies in Los Angeles, let's say for small businesses. And I can help you pick the right one, right? I'm the go-between, I'm the matchmaker. Doesn't have to be my expertise, but that's really helpful. And you could see how you could see how someone would would pay for that. The other thing I would do is I would consider creating something that I could offer as a service to increase existing customer revenue for people and take a cut of that. So what I mean by that is. I would look to find people that already have a product or service that is selling, right? There's already revenue being generated. So for example, I could go to someone who sells a course and offer to write an email sales campaign for them to get their existing audience to buy more, right? I'd say, you have this course, you've sold it to X amount of people in your audience. Let me write three emails for you that you can send to your audience. And I'll take 20% of any additional sales that generates no, no risk to you, right? If I believed I was good at writing sales emails or that kind of thing. So again, looking for like, where is there already transaction and revenue being generated? And what can I do to help increase that? And then just take a cut of the increase, right? Making it a no brainer for them. Again, it has to work like with anything, right? I have to be good at it and it has to, you know, provide value. But if I can do that, then that's an easy way to do it as opposed to trying to find new people and trying to find whatever. Another thing along those lines is, you know, I could find someone who has some expertise and maybe has what I call business overflow, right? So they have more potential clients coming in than they can handle, right? And or they charge $10,000 and they have a lot of people that only have a $2,000 budget. And right now they're just basically turning those people down, right? I could go to that person and say, okay, you have whatever method you have. What if you can sort of teach me, show me how to do your method. And I'll take all those people that can only afford $2,000 and I'll give you $1,000. You don't have to do any work. Just filter me your extra clients and leads. You'll get extra money. And for me, I'm, you know, as opposed to me having to go find, find new clients, I'm able to sort of just tap into someone who's already done a lot of the, the marketing work. You know, I had a client who's a career transition coach, and she was telling me that right now the majority of her clients are coming from her own coach who charges more and can't deal, can only work with so many people. And so she sort of trained her and said, I'll give you all the overflow. And it's, she's built a whole business just on doing that. She's now in the phase of figuring out how to attract her own people, because obviously that's a little risky long term. But short term, it actually is a really good shortcut to sort of get to revenue. The other thing I would say is I would, and this would be my last thing in terms of how to find people, I create a newsletter or a podcast or a blog or something that I could use to grow the audience and more importantly, get direct conversations with potential clients. Something that gives people who don't know me a reason to talk to me without me just cold pitching them. So if my ideal clients were course creators, right? I might start a newsletter or podcast or video channel or whatever it was where I interview course creators. Because now instead of reaching out to the course creator, and saying, hey, I want to pitch you my service. I say, hey, I want to feature you on my show. And they say, oh, I'd love to. And then we have an interview. 
and it gets me in the door and gets a relationship. And then it, that can lead to all sorts of different things. I think a lot of, you know, that sort of functioning like a media company or media outlet gets you access to people that are otherwise just going to ignore your sales pitch. So that would be the other thing I would do to try to get on the, the radar of people. I don't know if any of that stuff would work, but that, that's what I would try. So let me, let me ask you, of all the stuff I just said, do you have any questions about it? Or which of those ideas popped at you of like, that you would be most likely to try if you were going to, in the same situation? That idea of helping someone with the overflow is excellent. Mm -hmm. I, I could see that being a help to them yep, and benefiting from their, not only their overflow, but they're also their experience. Yeah. You kind of yeah, like an, it's like an apprenticeship. Yeah. And it's free money. It's free money for them. And I think there are more people than most people probably realize who have overflow of that's stuff. Really, that's really, nice. uh, especially once they've gotten to a, to a certain point. Yeah. Cool. 